Once the solver is done, go ahead and click OK, and let's look at our residuals. We see a nice convergence on the on them, and so we'll check the temperature average, average, and we see that we get this nice curve, and it hasn't quite reached steady state, but it um, it's good enough for our purposes right now. Go ahead and close out of Fluent. And then double, well, we, we won't use this results. We have to use a separate results tab. So we'll go under component systems and drag a results cell and then double click on that to open CFD post. Then we'll have to go and load our results manually. So browse to where your where you saved the file. Mine is on the desktop. And go under DP0, FFF, and you want Fluent. And we want the CDAT files, so we'll select all of these. And then click Open. Go ahead and click OK. And what we'll do first is we'll look at the temperature contour. For locations, we'll go and cons use Control A to select everything. And we already have temperature, global, and we'll use 101 contours. We want to view it from the Z direction and we can mock our view so they're all the same using this button. Uh, then we can choose which time steps we want. We'll put this one first and then we can choose this one last and we see that we start with this nice hot region and then it gradually disperses until it's nearly uniform at 0 0.01. We can also create a graph of this, so to do that we need a line, and we'll just leave the defaults, which match in our case, and use 100 samples. Then we'll go and create a chart, and we'll call this temperature variation. Under data series, we'll name this fluent and we'll set the location to line 1. The x-axis will have x and the y-axis will have temperature. Go ahead and click apply. So we see the pattern that we expect. It starts high and, and then decreases and levels out. Uh, but we want to tidy up our graph a little bit so we'll go and change this to Celsius first of all. So we'll go under Variables, double click on Temperature, and change this to C, and then click Apply. And then we'll go back to our temperature variation, and you'll have to return to the chart viewer. And we want it to go from 0 to 0 0.6. So we'll uncheck this and enter the values manually. We also want this to say concentration because we're talking about diffusion. So we'll change the axis label and call it concentration. We can do the same thing for the x-axis. We can leave this scale as is, but for the axis label we'll call this R since we're working in spherical coordinates. Under line display, we can toggle the visibility of each line, and we can also give them specific names. And then under chart display, we can change the fonts to make a more visible image for use in a report.